What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. I hate to say, I, I hate to see this type of weather. It means fall's coming. It means rhino's summer is gone and I am like a lizard guys. I like sunshine, not cold mornings like we have right now. Part four, I believe, of the gate project we are currently working on. Today I think we're gonna make some good stride. It was already going ahead and pulling off the forms on the curb that we poured that the track for the gate that is sitting on the trailer right there behind me is going to ride on. Now if you remember from the last video, we had to dig down significantly to keep this track level because I want the gate to be level. I want this whole sight line of this entire fence to be level. It's just one of those OCD things about me. Whereas we could have made this fence behind me kind of follow the grade and come uphill a little bit. And then we probably wouldn't be fighting what we're fighting right now. However, I feel like I wouldn't have liked this little section going uphill to a flat gate. I wanted this thing flat all the way across. But what that's gonna mean is we now have to dig down from here. We have to start sloping down. And then on the other side, we have to start sloping down. That way when you're coming into this section, you don't have a big drop where the gate is because that's no fun. So we're gonna be moving a significant amount of material today. I think what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna throw it in the mini truck and we're just gonna do little trips. Uh, Abel will be in the mini truck, I'll be in the excavator. He'll be making trips over to the carport because we do need dirt over there to make the driveway going up to the carport. Only thing is, I don't wanna mix any of this gravel with dirt because I don't wanna have to buy a ton of more gravel expensive to truck it out here in uh, mass quantities. One of the other reasons I hate this weather is everything is always wet in the mornings, uh, especially when you work in construction. So you can see, I mean, there's just so much water, which means this is gonna rust out. It gets sandblasted before it gets powder coated. So the little surface rust that it's gonna get on it right now is going to get taken off, but just, you know, it's disheartening, it's disheartening. Well, we got this side pretty much graded out. It was just grabbing the last little bit there by hand. Uh, wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be to get a nice transition. Now, obviously this side, we're gonna have to do some little heavier duty work on. Uh, you can see we're about 10 inches or so that we gotta come down. And I wanna be probably about two to three inches below the actual top of the curb because we're gonna put gravel on top of the dirt and I don't want the gravel up over the curb getting up over here, getting in the way of the track or anything like that. So the lower we keep things, the better. But you can see right here, it kind of ramps up pretty hefty. So I think on this side, we're gonna do some a uh, little more extensive digging than we did on this one. Mini truck's been doing great though. I'm doing not a ton of dirt in it, about seven, seven or eight scoops at a time, but it's not a super far trip, so. It's not too bad, we can do it quickly. For this side, we're gonna jump in the Coyote. I'm gonna use the box blade to pull the gravel back, because again, we don't wanna mix the gravel, we wanna be able to reuse it.
good, y'all. We did not need to take that back on this side either, as far as I thought we would. We did take out a good amount of dirt. Uh, I have it piled up here because I knew it was just going to be so much coming out. Um, and I had a place to put it on this side, whereas the other side with the trucks and everything parked there. Didn't really have a place to stage it, but it looks good. That is very, very gradual to the uh, to where the gate's going to be. Able doing the last little bit of uh, cleaning up on the edge. I don't want to get too close. You'll notice we left the form on this side just in case, uh, you know, we bumped it with the forks. We didn't chip the corner of the curb or anything like that. Yeah, so he's doing the last little bit of cleanup with the roto hammer. And then we got to haul all this off. Papa Rhino is on his way up. He is bringing up the gate motor and we're probably going to end up pouring a pad for that but I don't know where, I don't want to guess where until we actually have that thing in our possession. Making great strides already this morning. Look at that, look at that. Just looks so good, level, love level. I hope the gate height actually ends up working out because that was just kind of a guesstimate. It's not We got Paparano and the Coyote. We're gonna swap out to the bucket. He's gonna take loads of dirt over. Uh, it's probably quicker with the Coyote, maybe. It's about the same amount. Actually, we probably can get more in that bucket than we're putting in the mini truck. Let's see how he does hooking up. It ain't like a skid steer. Look at the camera. That's where you gotta go. That's gotta go right up in there. So, yep. That one's gotta go over. Just a little bit. You're you're good. You got room. Just turn right now, and it should go in. Oh, to me a little bit. Hold on. You have to back up a little bit and come over to me a little bit. Forward, forward. Curl for other way, other way. Keep curling. Go down, down, down. Down. All right, come up with your boom. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. All right, now curl back. There you go. More. More. Oh, too much. Too much. Curl down. Curl down. No, the other way. Uh, don't hit nothing. No. Hey, you see this practica? I'll see. Uh-huh. But yo tengo un camera in front. It's muy fácil con the camera. All right, y'all. We're going for the test fit now. While Papa Rhino's busy backing out and hopefully not hitting any of my trucks. Let's get this gate pulled out. First, we'll get the track put in place. Whew, that was loud. We've got the gate motor right there. We'll open that up in a second as well. Now, I don't know exactly where we want this. I'm assuming closer to the front is better. Uh, it's my first gate build though. So we went eight inch just to leave us some room. If we needed to shift back and forth, Curl the bucket way more. There you go, you're looking better. Oh, 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 yeah, yep. Yeah. Five bucks says it shuts off right now. Stalls out. Oh, maybe, maybe. Oh, no. All right, I owe one of you guys five bucks in the comment section. No mucho, huh? Es bueno, no, está bien. Está igual. Es exacto, este. Sí. Uh -huh, está igual, perfecto. Look at that, guys. This is what I'm talking about in the previous videos about framing it in. Why go to put this detail in and not show it off? So we need these extensions to be able to catch gate rollers that are gonna be somewhere around here. Whereas a lot of guys will just build the gate oversized. So like this two by would be here, but you don't get to see that detail. I like that detail. 
Might as well look at it. You get to see it on both sides. Whoo! Perfecto, Evo. See ya. It's open. Okay guys, this is the gate motor I went with. It is a Toppins. Don't know. Uh, sliding gate opener. This is on Amazon. It had really good reviews uh, and it was about uh, 500 bucks. It's normally almost $600. They have a, a lesser grade version. This one moves up to like 2,200 pounds. They have one that does 1,200 pounds. Well, this one had like a $70, $80 coupon that you can use. And when you used it, it brought them to about the same price. So I figured let's just go bigger even though this gate weighs next to nothing um, in, in terms of gates. At least we know we're never straining the motor because again, it was the same dang price. So let's open this up. This thing's kind of cool because it doesn't use a chain drive. That might bite me in the butt because that means our tolerances have to be better, I think. Uh, I don't know. I have zero experience building gates, even less experience ever seeing a setup like this. It is also solar. I didn't want to run power over to the gate. It's got three solar panels though. That's a pretty significant amount of solar panels and it's 24 volt. So that means I need two batteries. But as we've learned, we lose power out here a lot. So no matter what, we'd at least need a system with a battery backup. And that also gets expensive. But let's crack this thing open and see what we got. I'm already seeing some wires. Look at that, we got a key. Start this thing. Oh, what do we got here? Racks on racks on racks. Kind of weird thing is you'll, you'll see you'll see this track section that they have. And that's the side that mounts to the gate. Well, obviously, this box is maybe 24 inches, probably less. They needed to fit a bunch of those in there. So you get a bunch of little sections, which kind of sucks. I'd rather it just be like one big strip or two big strips. Um, and they only give you 13 feet of the track that mounts onto the gate. So I had to order some extra, which shows up in a couple of days. So we're not going to be able to fully get this thing operational. And I don't really want to screw too many things onto this thing until you know, then we're just gonna have to pull everything off. I'm assuming they self tap on. We'll see when we open these boxes. But really why I wanna open this right now is because I want to see where we need to mount it and if we should pour a little concrete pad for the motor. Uh, cool thing is though, you can actually plug this in as well. The solar is just an add on to that. Which I'm assuming maybe those go to batteries. I don't know, it's a pretty thin gauge wire. But that's why we have Sergio. So, oh look at this, we got solar panel one. Solar panel two. Maybe there's only two solar panels. Solar charge controller. Oh, wait, is that another solar panel? Solar panel three. You know, the Chinese are really good at packaging stuff. They get a lot of stuff in one box. Oh, this motor is tiny. So this is a three quarter horse as opposed to the smaller one was a quarter horsepower motor. Mounting hardware for solar panel kit. Look at this cute little guy. And we got some super Chineseium chrome uh, remotes. I don't know why they have so many buttons on them. Look, look at that, they're already working. Lighting up blue. You know, if I poured this curb a little bit thicker, we wouldn't even need it. Uh, this. I don't know, is there bolt holes? How do we mount this thing? We might be able just to mount this on the curb that's there. This is what the track slash rack is what they're calling it looks like. It's nylon reinforced. You know, it just looks like it could be cheap plastic, but this thing's got some heft to it. And there's just a million of these in, what are these, one foot sections? I wish these were bigger. I think the ones I ordered extra are longer, but I don't really know. Uh, cool, so the good thing is they allow for height adjustability. I think they go this way, upside down. Um, so once we put them on, we can still kind of fine tune the height, but this is good to know. Cool thing is they've got these little dovetails, so they all interlock to each other. Now I was reading in the instructions, there's two type of track you can get. There's the plastic rack reinforced with steel, and then there's the galvanized steel rack. We got the plastic one. Now in the instructions for the steel one, they're talking about welding on a rack nut. Um, I don't really know what that's for. I don't see anything about that on the uh, plastic reinforced one. So. so hopefully that means we're not welding on this thing. We're not really gonna be able to fully install it today and test it because we don't have all of the pieces of uh, track. There's a lot of wire colors just talking about here. See, looking at instructions like this, I just go cross-eyed. Uh, the same for me. Now, Abel is digging out. We're gonna pour a little pad. We actually need to raise this up because I went higher on my wheels instead of recessing the wheels into 
the metal and having this thing sit really low. I wanted it to sit higher. I wanted more ground clearance and it kind of fits the look of the fence, but that means this has to get raised up. So I'm gonna have to weld a pedestal to raise this entire gate motor up to the right height. That way this sprocket is the right height to catch once we put those gear tracks on this lower bar of the fence. So we'll just pour a little bit of concrete next to it. I wish we would have had this motor yesterday. I had no idea it was gonna be this small because then we could have done it with, we had plenty of leftover concrete, but we'll just mix up a little, a little half sack of concrete, throw it in that hole and then call it good. So we've got the little footing for that pad dug. Abel's mixed up some concrete. We're now doweling in some rebar. For structural stuff, you always wanna use epoxy and dowel things in properly. For stuff like this, if you guys are working in your backyards or you need to tie new concrete into old concrete, literally just use a roto hammer. Use whatever same size bit as the three bar you're using. So he's using uh, number three or three eighths three bar. He's got a three eighths bit. And as long as you're not too close to the edge, you can just use a sledgehammer and you can tap it in and it'll bind in there itself. Uh, if you're too close to the edge and you start hitting it with the sledgehammer, you risk popping the corner off of the concrete. But for uh, stuff like this, it's all you need. That'll tie that concrete in and they're never gonna come apart. And obviously he's drilling it at an angle because he can't get the roto hammer in straight, but it's 3 8 rebar, bends down super easy. So for this section, I got lazy, didn't really build a form. So we're just gonna kinda free form this. We got the float on one side being that edge. This two by four is here, we got eight inches and eight inches. I've already checked it with the torpedo and we are, woo, look at that, beautifully level. Not bad, not bad for free forming this. Should have Papa Rhino over here doing this and I jump on the tractor. That's more of my wheelhouse, this is more his wheelhouse. Now the reason we made this so big is that the gate roller bracket is also going to live on this pad because we're gonna kind of be right on the edge of this curb that we poured, which we did pour a pretty large curb, but not quite large enough. And I'm gonna switch with Papa Rhino. He was doing pretty good, but starting to dig some holes over here coming from this way. And we don't want, we don't want big holes right here. I'll trade you, you can finish that concrete. All right, so Papa Rhino got that concrete finished. Now we're just taking up the last little bit of dirt off of this side. Uh, I'm using the Mini X because there's a couple little spots that I wanted to regrade. We've got Papa Rhino in the mini truck. Abel is done for the day. We just got this last little bit and we are finished up. You know, for a little thousand dollar mini truck, this thing's been very handy around the ranch. She's had a couple little little tweaks needed to be made to her, but she runs good enough. And the last step for the day, getting all of this gravel pushed back into place. Now, a lot of it is getting mixed up. So again, we will need to bring in some fresh gravel at some point, especially if we're gonna have another rainy season like we did this past year. Now, it's not quite where I want it to be. However, we were able to use all of that dirt we dug out today to get a much better approach angle of a little ramp slash driveway up to the new carport. Um, now, I think I'll actually be able to pull the Diamond Sea dump trailer up here, which was like one of my main goals and one of my main things I wanted to keep covered. Obviously, you can see right now, as the uh, seasons are changing, the sun is kind of shifting more this way. So when the sun goes down, it's directly in the sides here. So we got to get these sides closed in uh, pretty soon. You can see the donkeys have been over here and oh one of the worst things you can possibly spread out is self-tapping screws these are tire poppers oh, gotta love these guys gotta love these guys just making my life real fun and well we're pretty much wrapped up for the day pop around i got this concrete looking good so we'll get that mounted once we get the gate back the next step for the gate is it's going to go over swift powder coat and i'm going to be powder coating this thing we're able to scrape enough gravel back over here to have both sides somewhat decent uh, especially considering it is supposed to rain tomorrow. We don't want to be tracking any mud anywhere, but we are good to go. So we're gonna get this loaded back on the trailer and uh, I'll be taking it to Swift Powder. 
All righty, gate is getting dropped off. The rain did us no favors. Over here, Swift powder coat, of course, the best of the best. All righty, y'all. Now, I know it's going to be a minute before we get the gate back from Swift, but that doesn't mean work ever stops at the ranch. So we're going to switch gears here and check this out. This is, I'm pretty excited about this. Look at that, y'all. Everything fits underneath the carport just like i had hoped again when i bought this thing i was kind of really figuring like maybe i could just put the tractor in the dump trailer the excavator it's been outside for a few years already uh it's not the end of the world if it stayed outside but then i got to thinking we did a little measuring and i'm like i bet i could get them all in there and well look at that and the best thing about it is all the doors open right because this is kind of tight and narrow however the way that the cab kind of angles in it still allows you to open the door and get inside. I would turn it around the other way, but the problem with that is the door actually lines up like almost perfectly with one of these, depending on where you put it. So it's actually better that way. Tractor doors, they both open kind of in the similar ways. Thankfully, those are suicide doors, so they open frontwards. So good to go on that. Hold the on, pro. We ain't ready yet. Another thing, happy to have back. We got the old F600. She is back and 95% ready for action. If you guys remember, our friends over at Graco Customs, they took this truck um when it came from minnesota it went to them they did a bunch of work to it and got it running and driving for me but they had a very limited amount of time and probably most people haven't worked on a 1960s truck so while they did an awesome job i just happen to have a neighbor that has worked on a ton like hundreds of these 1960s y block engines and he's been doing a ton of work on the engine uh new carburetor new lifters new i don't know i'm not a mechanic but he's done a ton of work to this thing and check this out let's get her fired up here wow, watch how easy this is no choke no throttle we used to have to run it with the throttle out a little bit but watch this oh ho oh, oh. ho you hear how quiet she is you probably don't even hear it because it's so dang quiet she is like she's running like a top and he's like he's still not happy he's like no no no, i gotta tune it up some more so it's gonna go back to him uh when we're done with it today but we need it today to move not only this pile of tree that was cut down and you probably heard him trying to roll the outro there a second ago papa rhino is out here to help me today I'm not sure what he's gonna want to do i don't know if he's super comfortable driving the dump truck or if he wants to be in the excavator he's probably gonna want to be in the excavator because that's got air conditioning but because the dump truck doesn't have air conditioning i've got a plan don't know if this is going to work or not or if it's going to be be good we've got the eco flow uh battery backup system that we use to power the hunting blind and i think if i hook that up to a fan we'll at least have some air movement inside the cab is it perfect no, is it gonna be a you know cold air? No, but once you start sweating, at least some air movement will uh, keep you a little bit cool because it is toasty warm today. This thing is rad though. If you guys need a battery backup system for your house um, or if you're camping or your motor home or your RV, your trailer, whatever it may be, this thing is super, super cool. We just keep it charged up full time for emergencies. We have a solar panel system too, for it too. So if we drain it and there is just absolutely no power and our generators run out of gas and we have no way to charge it, just hook it up with some solar panels and we have like infinite emergency power as long as there's sun. All right, so we've got her plugged in. The little hinge on here, these bolts are super loose. So once the door is closed, it should rest up on the door. For now, we just you just stay there. Turn that off. Oh wait, that button. No wait, I had the right button. All right, we're 100% charged, and this has just been sitting in my house for months without being plugged in. Still retains 100% charge. Let's see. The cool thing I like about it is it'll tell you how much uh, battery you have left based on the device you're using. So let's turn this on. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So on low, stay. Hold on. Stay. Oh jeez. We might have to like bungee this to somewhere so on low it's saying it'll run this fan for 15 hours let's crank it up to high we which all right there's high let's see what this changes to 13 hours not bad we're just going to keep it on low we don't think we need it too high today i just worry about it doing this the whole time we're driving around well y'all somehow i draw i drew the uh, short straw i get to load it and I get to drive. Bob Verano wants me to do the first load in the dump truck. And then from here on out, he'll take them. Got a lot of really long sticks. So most of this is gonna get burned. We'll save some of it for firewood. See, I wish we had the dump truck the day we were doing this because now the pile's all kinds of intertwined. Whereas when we were grabbing them one by one away from the tree, it would have been much easier to throw in the truck. Okay, 
be a little violent with it. Putting the headache rack to good use. Alrighty y'all, I mean, it's pretty warm air. We opened that wing window. It's better than nothing though, I will say. It's better than stale air. Let's fire this old girl up. You can't even hear her. That's how quietly she purrs over the sound of the fan, which hopefully is not making too much wind noise. I just thought about that. It's probably sucking for the camera. All right, here's the hope and we don't drop anything on the way. gates are coming in handy and then you probably remember from the past video when I went around and recut all the roads on the property which is very nice because now we don't need to cut across where we're gonna mow the one thing I worry about is dropping these branches and we go to mow and all of a sudden now we're like constantly hitting branches and stuff throughout the field while we're mowing we don't want that so these roads are all nice to have yeah, we just barely cleared it there looking good I love seeing nice roads like this cut. I know it's nothing special, it's just dirt, but you know, little stuff like that makes you feel good about the property. And here you can see it's already gonna be time to mow this whole field again. I'm in the market to buy a mower. That'll be happening hopefully shortly. Ooh, a little dusty, but we've arrived at the burn pile. Get backed up to it. When we go to burn it, whatever day that is, we're gonna consolidate all this and cut a big old road around it, have the water truck and yada yada. Alrighty, we'll engage the PTO. Go. Alright, there we go. Wasn't pulling the uh, bed raise hard enough. We'll get this old girl dumped. Now we only gotta do that. Uh, 75 more times today but it sure beats any other method we had of doing this now this window doesn't roll down the actual regulator or the arm that goes to the regulators right there at some point in its life it broke you can see it's very rusted out so we'll have to fix that that's why where you can only use the wing window right now for uh, some ventilation well I don't know where my excavator operator went do the first load and then he uh, disappears all right you guys we're doing it all we probably should have a chainsaw out here. I wonder if that's what he's doing. A chainsaw would be nice to chop up some of these. Well, we've acquired a new hood ornament sitting right there. And then with these pine needles hanging over the edge of that window, we pretty much have some uh, pine scented air fresher getting blown in with the fan. This thing's luxury. It's like a Cadillac. You know, for as old and ancient as she is, the dump truck sure does make quick work of cleaning up this whole area. Alvarado's working on the last load there, which is gonna have all the big logs that will probably eventually again turn into firewood at some point, but... Oh, so much nicer being able to haul it, dump it quickly. Got the last load in there. this one's got all of the monster stumps and then i threw just some random crap on top with like this big boy he's a he's a hefty one in there we'll see shouldn't be no problem for the old 600 though on my last trip paparato uh he packed it pretty tall put the big stumps on top and well you can see we kind of lost that one on the way thankfully it fell off the road though see how long it sits there before we actually end up picking that thing up we ain't doing it by hand that's for sure Alrighty, gotta say, stoked to have the truck back. Stoked that this idea kind of worked. We're down to 12 hours. 
I was even charging my phone off of it while we were driving around. Now hopefully we get the gate back soon and I'll show you guys the riser that I made for the gate motor. Uh, we'll get it installed. We'll see if this track system even works with the teeth and the gears and the stuff and the stuff on the gate. Hopefully it all comes together well and we can get it adjusted nice. And hopefully our hard work of making everything nice and level makes adjusting things easy. But you'll have to stay tuned for the next video. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.